Welcome to Innovation and Leadership. I'm Jess Larson. Today on the show, we've got Chris Hunt. The bikes that I'm excited about making are kind of in a category to themselves. They're more leaning towards the mountain bike side uh, in terms of weight. Uh, and my whole goal uh, with these electric bikes is making something that's completely fun off-road and not intimidating at all. Chris Hunt. Chris, thanks for making time. Thank you. So for, for, for people who don't know about you and the organization, can you give us the, the 30 second elevator pitch? Yeah, I'm, uh, my name is Chris Hunt. I'm one of the founders of high power cycles, um, or HPC. Uh, we are one of the few manufacturers in the entire United States that actually produce and engineer, uh, make us made electric bicycles. Um, we specialize in off-road uh, bicycles, but we're also gravitating toward some on-road um, U.S.-made bikes. And um, we also have recently started building bikes uh, specifically for military applications. Are you still there? Yeah. Okay. And uh, sorry, my phone on <laughs> Skype just did, turned off. Um, and yeah, that, that's basically what we do. Great. Um... So, uh, speaking of military, I, uh, I saw the discovery channel thing. T tell me, tell us about that. Okay. Yeah, cool. So, um, there's been a couple, we've been lucky. We've been blessed with a, a couple big shows and different companies. The first one, uh, maybe two years ago was uh, history channel and they kind of call you, uh, out of the blue and be like, Hey, I'm so-and-so with history channel. We're interested in having your bikes on top gear. And at the time, Top Gear was one of my favorite shows, and I loved it because um, I'm a car guy, and I love fast cars and fast things. Um, so anyways, it, it was kind of a mutual thing that, hey, we have your bike for a couple weeks. You supply the bike, and uh, we'll give you the footage after. So when it's transactions like that, I know that they're serious about the product, and they actually really do want the product. Um I've been hesitant in the past when people are like, oh, your bikes are so cool. You pay me this much money and I'll put it on. Um, we don't really do that because I know if they actually really want the product, um, they're going to be totally happy with us supplying a free bike to them. Uh, so then uh, Discovery Channel uh, did the same thing. They called us uh, a few months back and uh, they have a show called Battle Tested, which was awesome. Uh, it's an episode you can actually watch on discovery.com and hopefully the rest of the series gets picked up because it's super fun to watch. Um, but basically they, they wanted the same thing. They wanted, uh, w one of our bikes, the typhoon, um, for these two X, uh, special forces guys to test for, um, potential military applications. And they were doing crazy things like throwing it out of a plane, you know, with a parachute and the guy was trying to outrun a machine gun or on a helicopter and, you know, going through water and just any crazy scenario you can think of, they tried. Yeah, I saw the part where he got picked off, got shot out of the helicopter and knocked him off yeah. the bike. That was crazy. He actually, he actually, yeah, he actually literally got shot in the butt. It was really funny. <laughs> so, um, he was supposed to, I think he was supposed to miss, but I, it's really funny. <laughs> I think he did it on purpose. <laughs> so, um, for people who don't quite have a vision of this or they haven't seen these, it, um, give people a vision of, man, this looks, a, a ton like a mountain bike um and then you've got the one that that maybe takes a form factor a little bit more looking like a dirt bike okay um can i rewind it back and kind of tell you how how we started sure okay so um i was a commuter at uc davis and i was going to school on a traditional bicycle that you have to pedal um you know and i sweat pretty easily so uh, when I would get to class, I would be really sweaty and uncomfortable. And uh, especially then when I was, you know, a freshman and I was trying to talk to girls, I was like, oh, I feel so gross. It's like <laughs> disgusting. So um, I'm like, there has to be a better way. Like, I don't want to get to arrive to class sweaty every day. It was just so annoying for me. So then uh, I purchased an electric bike. And the electric bike I purchased solved that issue, but it raised an interesting issue for me. I would arrive to class slower than I did on a normal bike. I would get passed by people on pedal bikes on my electric bike. Uh, you know, so it was like, what is the point of this? If I'm paying all this extra money for batteries and motors and all this, and I'm slower than a normal bike. So now it takes me longer to get to class. Um, so, you know, I would have to leave a little bit earlier to get to class. 
So then I'm like, all right, there has to be a way to make this better. So I uh, took my 24 volt system and I added an extra battery, a seal lead acid battery. Um, for those of you that uh, want to know what a seal lead acid battery, it's kind of like your car battery. It's a big, heavy battery that they used to have 10, 11 years ago for electric bikes. Um, my battery system was like pushing 40 pounds at the time when I added an extra battery just to, to go a little bit faster. But I made my 24 volt uh, bike into 36 volts and uh, I gave it 50% higher voltage, which allowed my speed to increase around 50% as well. Um, you know, I was pushing in the low to mid 20 miles per hour range after the 36 volt conversion. Um, and I was finally passing bikers. So it was only at that point where I was kind of happy with the whole situation. Then, you know, I could be arrived to class quicker and I would arrive, uh, without sweating. So people started asking, Hey, that's, that's a cool bike. It's pretty fast. Where'd you get it? I'm like, you can't buy any fast electric bikes. You have to make it yourself. So, you know, without thinking much into it, I was like, you know, that kind of sucks that no one sells any fast bikes. Um, I the I transferred uh, to Occidental College to, to play basketball um, at a local college in Los Angeles because I, I wanted to play basketball first. Uh, but I uh, for the physics department, I uh, made a solar powered two seater Surrey bike um, with a very limited budget. <laughs> kind of was not very good in my opinion, but the uh, physics department seemed to love it and they used it a lot and it was all green because it was powered by the sun. Um, and he said, you know, you really have a penchant for building these, um, bikes. You should think about making this a business. So slowly but surely I turned my passion into a business and, um, and this I like made 10 years ago. This was, yeah, this was 10 and a half years ago. And then I, I sold my, well, a little bit before that, it, this could have been 11 years ago when I first sold the first one on eBay. I kind of sold my first, uh, it was my own personal thing. Um, you know, concoction on eBay. It was a, it was kind of just a converted bike. Um, and you know, people were unsure, like, like who's going to buy a $3,000 bike or, you know, $2,000 at the time, whatever it was. Um, but it sold. And then we're like, after that, we kind of decided to formally make it a business. And I got the, the, my, our, our email address. I, you know, signed up to get a business name and our business banking account and everything like that. And then the first bike we decided to sell under the company. Uh, we sold to a police officer in Seabrook, Texas, and it happened to be right when Hurricane Ike was barreling down the coast. And he, we sent out the bike. It was literally like two or three days before the storm. And um, he basically shocked us with a long testimonial that was talking about how our bike saved lives and it was the, the only tool that necess that he could possibly use to do all the things that he was doing. Um, I guess they were completely devastated by the storm and it was pretty bad and all the infrastructure was down and power lines were down and they couldn't get cars or gasoline anywhere. Um, so, we, But he had this electric bike and they had solar panels and he was able to navigate through you know the the down power lines and get places and he said he saved a couple people's lives because he was able to run them down people were like attacking older people or i remember the story about an old grandma getting attacked and he ran them down at 30 miles an hour uh silently and he didn't know it was coming and he jumped off the bike he jumped the guy and saved the grandma and you know helped people that you know stop people from stealing things and just doing all sorts of crazy things that i never even uh thought about uh, what our bikes could possibly do, but he just went off on how it was a life-saving tool and thank you so much. And it was the only thing that, you know, kept them sane and the only transportation. So, uh, but he's like, yeah, I just want you guys to know that your bikes really save lives. And, it, you know, it was pretty amazing. I have the original testimonial with the pictures on the website under our testimonial section. Um, but it, it was pretty shocking. And, um, kind of lit the fire underneath to say, Hey, we can actually provide something good in this world that can do crazy things. Not only is it super fun and, you know, help you exercise and see the world. Uh, and you know, it just going fast is fun to me, but you know, it could actually have, you know, life saving tendencies where you can actually, you know, help out in natural disasters and it can actually save people's lives. And that, that greater good part of it is kind of what drove us to really be serious about making this a business because it offers multiple benefits. That's awesome. 
Well, um, and I mean, for people who are, are not realizing how fast this goes, tell us how fast the fastest ones go now that you produce. Um, anywhere from five to six miles per hour. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so normal, the normal street legal bikes that we sell, uh, we have to limit to 20 miles an hour and 750 watts. Um, and that's the federal legal limit. And uh, in Cal the state of California, it's uh, labeled a class two electric bike. Um, but beyond that, for private property use or off-road use, when you're in OHV areas or wherever you are and you want to kind of just tune it up, uh, the fastest bike that we have is called the HPC Revolution, and uh, the fastest model can do uh, 60 miles per hour. And it was engineered from scratch to be able to take that, so the head tubes beefed up and everything's just beefed up and super strong, a lot thicker aluminum than normal. Um, and there's a lot of engineering that went behind uh, building a frame that could withstand those kinds of speeds. That's awesome. Well, uh, I've got a bunch of questions about, you know, not just the engineering, but but you know, the marketing and creating a market. Um, let's take a quick break from our sponsor and, and come back from that. So Chris, uh, before the sponsor break, I was asking you, I was bringing up that, you know, you've, you've not just got the technical challenge of creating essentially an awesome mountain bike that can do 60 miles an hour, but, but you got to get people to buy it. Right. And they're, yeah. Not, they're yeah. not the cheapest thing in the world and they're not exactly what everybody has in their mind already. Um, can you talk about, um, a little bit of this idea of, you know, in some ways it's going towards the motocross world in other ways, it's, it's taking the mountain bike world to the next level and just kind of that, uh, you know, expanding of the market and changing of the market and, uh, okay. kind of being a pioneer. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the bikes that I'm excited about making are kind of in a category to themselves they're more leaning towards the mountain bike side uh, in terms of weight. Uh, and my whole goal uh, with these electric bikes is making something that's completely fun off-road and not intimidating at all. Um, I grew up riding ATVs and, you know, power sports, and I love it. Um, you know, I rode dirt bikes a little bit. Um, but one thing that always kind of caught me off guard on a dirt bike is I was always well aware that I was on a 280-pound machine. And I had 280 pounds of weight between my legs. And it always kind of freaked me out when, you know, I'm in technical terrain or I'm going fast or I'm doing something that if something happens, you know, my leg can get broken off. Um, so uh, that's part of the reason why I'm so obsessed about keeping these bikes lightweight. Uh, and all the future U.S. made products we're making are, are going to try to drastically decrease the weight and uh, increase the power levels. Uh, I want to really get it down into the 60... 60 pound range, uh, with a lot of power and a lot of battery capacity. Um, it's just, it's just way less intimidating. At least for me, it's way less intimidating to ride something that when it feels nimble and lightweight and it's, it's not scary. It's just, it's more, it's more fun to me. So I, I feel like a lot of people will appreciate that when they ride our bikes. And so like the revolution, this, the fastest bike you've got now, how heavy is that one right now? So right now it's starting in the, it depends, the, the mid-drive version. We have a couple versions. One, the mid-drive. Mid-drive is when the, the electric motor is in the middle of the frame and it drives back through the rear gears and the derailleur like uh, your legs traditionally do when you shift gears. Um, that, that is a lighter weight motor. Uh, that one starts in the high 60-pound range on the Revolution. Uh, and then the hub motors, uh, hub motors mean that the motor itself is built into the rear wheel. And so the motor itself propels the wheel as soon as you hit the throttle directly because a direct drive, um, those are a little bit heavier. Those start in maybe they're about 10 pounds heavier. So they start in the upper 70 pound weight range. And so what does that, what does that mean for weight for the total bike? Yeah, yeah no, no, that's the total bike weight. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, in the 60s for the mid-drive and in the 70s, the high 70s for the total bike weight on the, the Revolution with the hub motor. That's great. So, um, you know, I, I have buddies out here in Park City that, you know, they, they do really well and they're like, <laughs> their mountain bike's like $10,000, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but there's not as many folks at that range. Um, so talk about creating something awesome where it is, you know, a, a higher end product in the price range compared to say the biking world and and how you're um 
like how positioning works or how you help people, what you think it is that helps them spend the dollars to get something this awesome. Okay. Um, first of all, I want to shout out to High Country E-Bikes, which is out by Park City, and they sell Revolutions. I think they even have floor <laughs> models of Revolutions. Um, but, but basically, I think what sells it, honestly, is the passion behind it. Um, you know, I try to make a product that looked as cool as possible that was – you know, the, the highest quality possible, you know, machine work and, and aluminum. And we worked hard with multiple met suppliers to try to get perfect carbon fiber panels on the side, on the left and right side and the top without any inclusions. And it took a while until we finally found uh, settled one on a U.S. made carbon manufacturer. Um, but I think it's it's one, obviously, the, uh, your customer only has one lens to look through it, and that's the lens of your camera and what you put on your website. So you got to make sure that your, your photos are indicative of the quality that you're trying to put out there. But two, uh, it's the passion behind it, and that's just my opinion. Um, when people just see the passion behind it and what you, uh, you know, just how, how you talk about it you know, on the phone and how you, how it comes across when you're doing YouTube videos. I think they can really understand when you're truly passionate about something and you really think and you believe something is as awesome as you say it is. Yeah. Well, and, and talk to me about this. Um, how has form factor um, changed? Like, or what, what, when you look at like, you've got some of the bikes that look super traditional, some that look more like a downhill bike and then stuff like the, Di the Typhoon, which has got more of a motocross feel, motocross seat. Um, how has that changed the response? Like what, what kind of responses do you get differently to the form factor of a Typhoon that looks more like a motocross bike versus the Revolution that looks more like a downhill bike? So wild, wild, wild opinions on uh, especially Typhoon. It's like hate it or love it so much that it's just it's crazy. Um, a lot, a lot of the posts we do on Facebook uh, just have so many views and likes and comments. Either that's the ugliest thing I've ever seen, or that's the coolest looking bike I've ever seen in my life. Uh, it's crazy. Um, the revolution uh, mostly is, is good. You know, we get positive feedback on the, the styling of the revolution. Um, it's more traditional. The, the Typhoon is definitely out there in between a mountain bike and a dirt bike, but definitely looks like a dirt bike. And do you think that's the reason, I mean, like, cause wasn't it the Typhoon that made it into like the Rob Report magazine and some of that kind of stuff? Yeah. Rob, Rob Report, uh, the Typhoon is in Rob Report, the Revolution All-Terrain or the Revolution AT. That's the fat bike version of the Revolution, which was the world's first downhill fat bike. Um, there's never been a fat bike capable of five inch tires or super wide tires that actually had eight or more inches of suspension travel. So that was an engineering feat in itself to bring that to market. Um, but yeah, bo both of those bikes were on uh, Rob report. So can you, can you talk about that for you? What's the advantage for the brand to push out and to be the first of something like that? Um, I guess it gives us credibility, but honestly, it just drives me to do something that's never been done before. And I love coming out with new things that are just unique. One of the companies that inspires me is uh, Dyson, um, just because their their products always seem so wild and outside of the box and revolutionary. Uh, it's just like they take some simple concept and just flip it on its head. Um, Dyson, I think they're the, they're the ones that came out with the, that crazy bathroom dryer, uh, hand yeah, dryer, yeah. where it comes around like a circle back on your hands. And then now they have, you know, the, all the crazy vacuums that pivot on that ball. And then they have, um, what do they have? I saw, I saw the weird looking fan that just looks like empty space with nothing yeah, there. Yeah, it's just got a circle blows. with nothing in yeah. the middle, right? Yeah, yeah. So I really like when engineering and design comes into play uh, on both sides. Uh, at first, we were kind of ast not aesthetically worried. Uh, we kind of just made bikes that worked and were pretty fast, but didn't worry about the aesthetics. But I, I've come to realize and I've kind of appreciate how important aesthetics are yeah. um, for selling a product. Well, we're we're probably at about time for part one of the of the interview. Um, if you if you had you know, I know you've learned tons of things in a decade of building this business and inventing stuff that's never existed before, and actually doing it profitably and and <laughs> keeping the company alive while you invent it. Um, if you had one principle that you feel like has really served you well over that time that maybe, uh, you would, you would say to the rest of us that, that you feel like has served you, what's, what's one of the ones that you feel like has really worked for you over this last decade? Um, 
never give up and always keep the faith. I mean, there's been times where it's been pretty cyclical and we sold a ton of bikes. We're like, oh, yeah, this is great. It's going to continue forever. And then there's times where the sales just drop off and you, you kind of just got to believe that it's coming and not, not change anything. And, you know, don't panic. Don't get desperate. You know, just believe in your product and know what you're doing and believe that it's going to all work out in the end. Yeah, it's funny how simple that is to say, but when you're when the bills are mounting and the revenue is not coming, how much how much harder that is, and how much like mental fortitude it takes to actually deliver on that, huh? Yeah, no, it's it's definitely it's definitely tough. Um, you know, sometimes you you got to hold off and payments uh, that you owe to people, and it gets it gets it gets pretty crazy. Um, I, I know that a couple of times. Hi, my sorry, my little two-year-old daughter just walked through the room. <laughs> Mommy's sick in her way. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's been a couple of times for sure that um, you know we've, we've had to hold off in payments and just hope that we sold something, you know, to to cover that. But it's it's always worked out. And one of the things that I never do is I I really never ever extend uh, ourselves credit. So I will never purchase anything on credit. You know, I, I, I will make sure to our, our bank account has more than enough money and only then will I purchase something. Uh, we don't do terms with anybody um, just because I, I know it's, it's really easy to borrow and it's hard to pay back. So that's something that we're very uh, cautious on and we just make sure that we have enough of the account to comfortably purchase what we need to do. Well, I think uh, that's pretty uncommon and probably one of the reasons that you've beaten the odds as far as how many businesses go out of business in the first five years, let alone the first 10. So yeah, probably some disciplines probably paid off for you there. Yeah. Yeah. And my brother, uh, Derek is supremely, uh, <laughs> strict with money. So he, he watches me. I'm, I'm the one more willing to try crazy things and throw money at, uh, engineering new things. And, but you know, if you don't have money at the time, then it kind of gets nixed and he kind of <laughs> got, has my back. That's awesome. My my business partner in a number of my endeavors over the last twelve years is my brother, whose name is Nick, and mm -hmm. he he lovingly has the title corporate Costanza, like George Costanza. That's hilarious for, for some similar reasons. So that's pretty <laughs> awesome. Well, listen, uh, everybody, please tune back into part two of the interview. Uh, we're going to keep learning more about uh, inventing the future of e-bikes.